Hello, welcome to Rise Up with Orion's podcast. I am so excited to have our presenter here today about something that I think we are all struggling with right now. Um, this is going to be an audio only podcast, so know that our videos will be turned off, but know that the conversation is still here and you're going to get so much out of it. So I want to introduce our presenter. He's been with us, it was probably about a year and a half ago, Justin, um, yeah. was on our podcast and back by popular demand because he has so much expertise and I want to introduce him to you. So Justin received his bachelor's degree in sociology from the University of Utah and his master's degree in mental health counseling from the University of Phoenix. Justin has extensive training working with individuals, couples, and families. He spends a lot of time working with clients experiencing depression, anxiety, trauma, ADHD, substance abuse, and couples issues. Justin enjoys working with people that are motivated to be successful and just need a little extra help to reach their present potential. He also enjoys helping couples learn to communicate more success successfully. In his spare time, he enjoys exercise, running triathlons, playing, watching sports, and spending time with his wife. Justin, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule at Blomquist Hill to join us um, to talk about this topic that I think we are all feeling very, very close to right now. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. So Justin, this is an interesting tongue twister title that we've called our podcast today about yeah. controlling the controllables. I feel like I talk about this a lot with my sons, my two young sons, because there's so many things that they want to control that they can't. So let's start out by talking a little bit about that. Obviously, to a six and a nine-year-old, it's very different than the population we're talking to today. So how do you know if something is in your control or not? Might be a place to start. Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. And it's something that we all face of trying to control things that maybe we can't control and, and what we do about the things that we can and what can we do about, you know, the things that we can't control. And so... It is, it is an interesting topic for all of us, and I think we all face it from probably on a, a daily basis of trying to control things that maybe are out of our control. And so I, I think to, to know the things that we can and can't, we have to take a step back and really think about, okay, is this something that, you know, is something that I can do something about? Or is this something that no matter what I try, there might not be a ton that I can change? You know, maybe an example would be the weather, you know, <laughs> so, so we might want to change the weather. I know we had a, a birthday party for my daughter, who's two, um, back in September, and we wanted to have it outside. But the problem was it, it decided it should rain that whole day and, and a couple days before. And so we couldn't change the weather, but we could change what our expectations were, maybe where we were going to have the party and, and everything that goes around it. But we could not change the weather, even though we wanted to have it outside more than anything else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And I think, you know, given so about so much of that has happened over the last couple of years as well is, you know, you can't control the pandemic. You can't control politics, you know, so many yeah. of these things. But, you know, I'm sure you're going to talk about it it's about our reactions to those things. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, you're 100 you're percent right. Our, our reaction is really what we can control. You know, what what we decide, you know, our expectations and then what we decide to do and and our thoughts about that sometimes when we're just going about our day we'll have different situations that will happen and we'll have some automatic thoughts and some automatic kind of emotions that pop up that we don't necessarily even have control over but what we have a hundred percent control over is what we decide to do with those thoughts and those emotions and so although we might have like I said, those things pop up. We get to decide, is that true for me? Does that, does that emotion have to define how I feel today? You know, so if we wake up and we're not feeling very happy today, there's things that we can do to get ourselves out of that, or we can just feel that way all day long if we choose to feel that. But we get the choice that decides how we feel going forward. 
Right. And I think for me, there's also that compounding effect as well as, you know, maybe one day I don't wake up on the right side of the bed and I am feeling kind of negative, sad or angry that day. Over the course of the day, it just compounds um, if I'm, I'm not starting to control those things and to be aware of them. Right. Right. Yeah, we, we can let those those emotions kind of decide how we feel. I've, I've heard this before that that thoughts and emotions come like waves but we get to choose which ones we ride. And, right. and so one thing to kind of think about with that is, okay, I'm feeling this emotion or this thought, do I have to feel that way? Just cause I woke up like that, does that have to, you know, if, if I allow that to keep happening, this is most likely what my day looks like. You know, it's called playing out the tape. So I, I know I've woke up like that before, and if I keep allowing that emotion to dictate how I feel, this is likely what my day would look like. And so if I do something different, you know, maybe building upon some things that have helped in the past, you know, maybe when I wake up like that, maybe going for a walk really helps. Maybe talking to somebody that's fun to talk to and, and, and I just enjoy being around them is something that can spur me out of that emotion or you know maybe those sad feelings or frustration or whatever it is and so if we can think back of what are some things that really have benefited us in the past and then we can build upon that and that can hopefully get us out of that it's really beneficial for every one of us to think about okay well you know maybe what are some things that cause us trouble but at the same time what are some things that i do that help me when I am struggling that day? What is, you know, so say I wake up and I don't feel that good that day. What are some things that I can do that might help me? And we, in that, that's all that this is, is pretty much controlling what we can control about different situations. Right, and everyone is different as well. And I think it's just like so many of the different habits that Orion talks about in our coaching model and all of those things, very similar to what you do as a therapist and a counselor, is yeah. you gotta figure out what tools and tips are gonna work for you. So for me, I need to completely walk away from that situation for a few minutes, yeah. take some breaths and you know, just kind of become present for just a moment. And that really works for me. But again, to someone else, walking away and having that time to kind of, internalize and settle for a minute might not work for them. And so again, it's, you know, what's gonna work the best for you and knowing what other people do isn't necessarily gonna be a one size fits all model. Right, right. And, and that's where, you know, say you're talking to a therapist or a friend or a family member, whoever it is, and they can say, hey, these are the things that work for me. And that's fantastic. It's great to get that information. Mm -hmm but you need to figure out what happened, what helps you. You know, even if somebody else that's a professional tells you, but that doesn't seem to benefit you very much, that's not what I would tell you to do. You know, you gotta figure out, these are the 10 things, these are the things that I usually can do that, that help me. And so it's, it's good for all of us to determine and be able to write down and maybe store those away, whether it's in a phone or a journal or whatever it is that mm -hmm. says, hey, when I'm struggling, these are things that I can do that actually does help. And, and that would be the first place I'd want you to look when, when you are trying to control something that, that's, that seems really difficult or you do wake up and, and things aren't very good. You know, what, what can I do that has benefited me? Exactly. I love that. I often think about it as like plays in a football game or something where you have a whole playbook of things to try or, you know, ingredients yeah. in a recipe, different things to try to make it the very best that it can be. You know, those are kind of things that I think about as well when I'm trying to pull those things out during a time that is is really hard. So, right. Justin, what are some of the skills or some of those things? You talked about a couple of them, but I would love to start to build those ingredients and build those, you know, plays. What are some of the skills that I can use or our population or community can use when they are feeling out of control? Yeah, well, I think probably the first step is to determine what's going on. What is the situation? What is kind of causing me to feel out of control? And I, I kind of like to separate it into to three different columns. Okay, so what's the situation? 
what's causing me to, to feel like that? And I'll write that down. And then I'll write down in the next column by it, okay, what can I control about this situation? What can I influence about this situation? Same type of thing. And then that third column is, is there things that I can't control? You know, and, and so that's kind of the first step to figure out, you know, take a step back, maybe take a couple deep breaths, calm yourself down, write this, write that down, those three columns. And then, you know, you're, you're going to do different things with both of these activities. So you have this situation. I'll give you an example of, of the situation for me recently when I was thinking about this topic. So I live in in South Jordan, Utah, and I drive to Orem for work usually. And that's about a 30, 30, 35 minute drive on the freeway. And so something that happens on the freeway, a good amount, is I'll get rock chips in my windshield <laughs> as, mm -hmm. as I'm driving. And this can be very frustrating to me, especially when I've gotten one in the past, I had to get a new windshield. And then, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of weeks it later- It happens again. Yeah, it'll happen again. And and I'll get pretty frustrated about that. And so so I, I thought about this idea with, with this situation. So the situation is I get these rock chips. And so what I can't control about that is, for one, what other drivers are doing. If they're flipping up rocks or not, what's on the freeway, I can't control those things. But what I could control is what I do in my car. And and one thing with that is I thought about, okay, well, is there actually things on the internet, some different things that I should do that I could learn that, hey, might help me to stay away from getting rock chips? You know, is there distances away that I should stay away from big trucks? Is there particular lanes that might be safer. And so to some extent, I thought about, well, what are all of the things that I can control? One, I can control what I can, the information that I get, and then what I do in my car. What I can't control is what somebody else does. And so ultimately, I wanted to learn the best ideas that I could. And then when that thought pops up in my head of, hey, I want to, you know, not get a rock chip today, then I just need to follow through with the things that I've decided to do, my planning, my work, and my effort. So that's one of the things that I would suggest is take a step back, determine what the situation is that's causing you trouble, what can you control about that situation, and what can you not can control. And, mm -hmm. and then with the things you can control, put some effort into those things. The things that you can't, to some extent, I have to just say, hey, I can't control what they're doing. I'm going to do the best I can for me. And, and that's kind of the best that I, I can create the environment of being safe, but I can't control everything that happens with that. So I'm just going to do the best I can with that. So I think recognizing some of the control that we have, I think journaling can be a part of that. You know, if there's something that's really difficult for us, you know, say it's, you know, this this comes up from time to time. Hey, I I really want to control what my kid does in school or how they believe about religion or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. and to some extent, we can't control how they're going to do in school. We can't control what they choose to believe, but we can create an environment that maybe they'll learn the things that they want. We can control, you know, teaching them how to work hard. We can control, you know, maybe some things that we have them study or, or read or different things like that. And so it's, it's the same type of thing of, hey, if we want a lot of people to have a great time at a party, we can't control that they have a great time at the party, but we can control <laughs> what the environment looks like. We can control that there's pizza. We can control that there's fun games to play. We can control that everybody brings a, you know, that we're, I asked people to bring a gift, you know, all of these different things, but we can't control in those other people's minds if they had fun or not. So, so sometimes the things that we can't control, it's worth journaling about. Some people will talk even about like a worry time. Um, I use this for, for stress and anxiety a, a good amount with people, but 
maybe it's, you know, I can't control what my kid does in school, but it's really, it really affects me. And so a worry time that you could do with this is you actually decide on a time, you know, on Tuesday and Thursdays for 15 minutes, I'm going to worry about the things that I can't control. And so I'm going to write them on a piece of paper and I'm going to put them in this little worry time box. And because that's not something I can control, I don't need to think about it a ton more. I'm going to write it down on that piece of paper. I'm going to put it in this box. And then when it's Tuesday at two o'clock, when I've determined that's a worry time, I'm going to open up that box and I'm going to read it and I'm going to think about it and I'm going to worry about it for 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give myself a time period to be able to do that. And during that time, I think about it. And I would urge you to, you know, is there anything now that I've thought about this a little bit more? Is there anything that I can control about this? Is there any, you know, could I change my expectations? You know, one other thing to think about, if if they don't do well in school, how difficult would that be? You know, what mm-hmm. would that change about my life? What would that change about their life? And to some extent, it's worth thinking about if the worst thing happened, say they don't do very well in school, what, you know, how am I going to get through that? How am I still going to have a pretty good life even though that happened? And one thing to remember mm-hmm. is we're usually much stronger than, than we realize we usually can get through so many more things than we actually think that we can. And, and the future, you know, is, is just as likely to be positive as it is to be negative. You know, that we all have heard tons and tons of things about people that have not finished high school or quit college that have grown up to be these amazing people and have accomplished these fantastic things, whether we're talking about, you know, Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook or, you know, or all these different famous people that have been really successful. Yeah, I I would suggest that college is probably a great route and <laughs> doing good in school. But there is people that are successful that that haven't gone that path. And so sometimes thinking about other outcomes can be really beneficial for us. Yeah, and Justin, you're I'm scribbling things down for myself, of course. I have to learn from the experts. And a couple of things that are really resonating with me that I always have to remember my remind myself, you know, being a mom and a COO and a peer and a friend is I can never control someone else. As right. much as we try to do that, when you put a someone on that, um, that is really, really important for, for me to remember, um, especially with my kids. I cannot control what it is that they can do. I can help to guide them and give them the things, like you said, the tools that they need. But the reality is, is no matter who it is, you can't control other people. Um, and really, we shouldn't be trying to do that. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> so that's one thing that I really wrote down. And another tool that uh, I would love to know if you suggested or if not, is really just to take that step step back and figure out is this going to matter to me next week, next month, next year, or five to 10 years from now? I love um, that. I often use yeah. this for myself is, you know, that rock chip, is this really going to matter to me next year? No, but why am I freaking out about it right now? It's sure. a huge deal. Um, sure. So that's something that's worked for me. So I would love to know kind of your sense on that. Yeah, I, I think that that's a fantastic one. I, I think that it's really important to, to, really take a step back and to be like okay so that that rock chip you know in a week from now how big a deal will that be well you know maybe it depends on obviously how big it is and what needs to be done but but honestly like i told you i i've had to change out my windshield and i had a deductible of 100 bucks and so mm-hmm. how much is 100 bucks gonna is that gonna destroy my future for a week yeah, it's not my favorite thing to spend a hundred bucks on it, but is it going to ruin my bank account? Is it going to make it so I can't save the money I want? No. And then, you know, like you said, in a month, in a year, it, it's not really going to matter at all. You know, from mm-hmm. five years from now, I might not even remember I had a rock chip, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so like, I, I think that that's really important to think about, okay, well, if it's not going to be a big deal in the future, then let's not make it a huge deal right now. If it is going to be mm-hmm. something I think about in the future, 
hopefully it's something that I can control and I'm sure there's at least pieces pieces of it that I can do something about that for sure. Right. Well, and I think Justin, so much of anxiety often is rooted in the inability to control the future or even to control the current situation. So kind of tell me your sense of control and what maybe this anxiety is trying to tell us or when anxiety starts to kick in. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it is important. Anxiety is, for one, just, just an emotion like any other emotion that we have. And anxiety is actually an important emotion for us to have. We wouldn't want to take away anxiety from us. Now, would we want to manage it at a manageable level? Yes, I 100% I believe that. But, but anxiety actually tells us what's important, maybe what we need to think about, what we want to put a little bit more effort into, maybe even to some things that, that we need to learn. And so say you have a, a test coming up. If you're anxious about that test, that's, that's a good thing. That's telling you that you want to study, that you need to put forth some effort, that it's important for you to pass this test. We wouldn't want to just yeah. say, hey, get rid of that. Stop thinking about anxiety because anxiety is a very motivational tool. Anxiety becomes a problem when it becomes overwhelming and we just feel it all the time and we don't use it to our advantage. And so for sure, anxiety is telling us what's important, what we need to think about and what could help us. Now, if it becomes rampant and overwhelming, then that's when we need to step in and do things a little bit differently. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for me, that worry journal is a great tool um, for when that anxiety, we're so worried about what's going to happen, is taking shape. I talk about this a lot in my sleep workshops that I do is to have that yeah. worry journal. You don't, we shouldn't be doing it in the middle of the night or before bed. But again, the reality is to get it out there, I think is a great coping mechanism, not only for the controllables but yeah. also anxiety so it doesn't turn into something more um and right. that's kind of where i wanted to go with that is you know what if anxiety isn't dealt with obviously it's trying to tell us something but if we're not dealing with it what's what's the reality yeah yeah it it can cause us to 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 become overwhelmed and, and to have kind of some some more serious consequences what what i compare it to is you know, think about it kind of this, this treadmill of life type of idea. And so we're on a treadmill and everybody can, can think about this. If you're on a treadmill and it's going too fast, what we do is we, we get off the treadmill or we slow it down or we put our feet to the side and let the, the treadmill belt keep going. In life, we, we do a little bit different than that from time to time, unhealthily. So what we'll do is, Life is busy. Life is overwhelming. We're feeling a lot of anxiety. And what we decide to do is we speed up the treadmill. And so the things that used to help us to slow the treadmill down was getting good sleep and exercise and eating healthy and talking to people that help to reduce some of our anxiety and doing some fun things that get us get our minds off of anxiety and let us enjoy something else. But what we do is we're like, okay, well, I'm so busy, I'm anxious, or life is stressful. I'm going to, you know, I used to sleep eight hours. Now I, I can get up a little earlier. So maybe I'll get up at, you know, I'll only sleep six hours and that'll be okay. You know, I used to go out to to lunch with one of my friends once a month or whatever it is. And I just don't have time to do that. Maybe it's a date night that I used to do weekly, but we're just so busy that we take that out. What happens is, is that anxiety and, and that stress and everything that's causing us trouble, instead of turning that treadmill of life down, we actually are turning up the pace. And so if we keep allowing that to happen, if we don't deal with that anxiety, then before long, that treadmill, we're going to fall off and we're going to involve seeing those YouTube videos where people smash their faces on the treadmill mm -hmm. or they fall off the back, whatever that is. That's what it looks like for us if we don't try to manage our anxiety 
we can, you know, that's when we could, you know, have to start taking some medication that we might have a breakdown. We might, you know, stop enjoying some parts of life and our jobs and, and, and all of those different things. So it, it is very beneficial to try to manage and, and reduce anxiety. Remember, we're not trying to take it away, just like stress. We're not trying to take them fully away because they're beneficial. And even if we did put all of our effort into it, we wouldn't be able to reduce them to nothing. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to manage them successfully. Exactly. And Justin, I want to circle back a little bit to how much we can learn um, from dealing with, you know, or addressing control and dealing with anxiety is and learn so much from that um, as we look back uh, at our success that we've had or maybe how we did well or maybe we didn't do well in dealing with that. So I would love to kind of circle back to that is how do we build on those past successes that we've had to manage anxiety or hopelessness, maybe even burnout? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's worth thinking about, you know, what has helped. You know, we, we, we talk about, you know, a professional, an article, the internet, a doctor, whoever it is might say, hey, these are the things that you need to do if you're burnt out or anxious or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But most importantly is just taking a step back and probably writing down what are the things that has helped me? You know, when mm -hmm. let, let me think about a time that I have been really stressed or anxious in the past or things haven't gone right. You know, what, what did I do to get myself out of that? What did help? You know, who was it that I talked to? You know, what types of activities, what type of expectations with myself did I have to change? You know, so, so what was those things that I learned from the past that helped me? What didn't go right? You know, we have all, failed. We've all made mistakes in, in the past. What did I do to correct those things? What helped? How did I feel a lot better about that going forward? And, and those are things to reflect on and, and build on in our lives. Because like I said, there's nobody in <laughs> listening to this that has never not made a mistake or has never not been anxious or had tried to control something that was out of their control what was beneficial how did i make progress and like i said and maybe that's a journaling thing maybe that's a sitting and you know some people really like to to meditate that can be a fantastic thing in, in doing in the, at this point yeah and i have an example that i would love to share just as you're talking about that is we were talking at dinner last night about feedback um you know with my children so what do you do when someone gives you feedback usually you know constructive feedback but not always and yeah. so i asked my nine-year-old i said well what do you do with feedback and again i have no idea where he gets these th these things from but he said i store it in my mind and my body for when i need it later so i can do better next time and I was like, wow, you know, to put it so simply, it's the same thing with our successes <laughs> as well, is to store those things. Right. So when it happens again, we can do better, we can better cope with them. So I kind of loved how that really yeah. fed into our conversation. Today. Yeah. Just leave it to a nine-year-old to help <laughs> me learn the lessons of life. So <laughs> the joys of that. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. You know, so it's, it's pretty cute. So anyways, Justin, we're kind of nearing our end. So I always want to have all of our experts that I have on our podcast share kind of their top three to five tips or skills or, you know, whatever it might be for the topic that you really want people to remember and have them resonate with that. Um, and yeah. also within your seat as well, being, you know, a therapist counselor for Blomquist Hale. Sure. You know, you may want to talk about that as well. So I will leave it right there and turn it over to you. One one thing that I would say is some things I would want you to get right. And we've kind of referenced this a, a, a little bit along the way. But but I really like this an analogy, this reservoir analogy. And, and what it says is that 
in life, we're going to have some things that we can't control. We're going to have some stressful events. We're going to have some anxiety, some different things that happen. And so this reservoir idea, I think, helps to explain a lot of what I talk about with a lot of different people. And so with that, if you can just picture a reservoir, just a man-made lake, and usually this lake is going to have water coming out of it. And, and in our example, this water coming out of it is things that we can't control, stressful events, anxiety, whatever it is. So you can imagine this lake and there's all these, this water coming out. And, and we, what we need to think about is, okay, so for me to manage and have a healthy balance of water in this reservoir, I have to be putting water back in. Because if I don't, before long, this reservoir is not going to be able to do its job for drinking water or electricity or whatever it is, and it's going to look like a desert. And so I have to be having these, you know, this raindrop, this snow runoff, this, you know, rivers, the streams, all of these different things that put water back into the reservoir. And so some simple, simple things that I would tell you guys to put water back in the reservoir is, you know, how much sleep are you getting? You know, how about some healthy eating, getting some form of exercise five times a week, at least for 30 minutes, talking to people that help you to reduce some of your stress. And maybe they can even talk to you about, you know, well, what's controllable, what's not controllable. 70% of what helps at all in counseling is just having somebody to talk to. It has nothing to do about the skills that I teach you, you know, the, the techniques, whether it's cognitive behavioral therapy or DBT or EMDR, all of these different types of therapy. 70% of what does any good is just having somebody to talk to that, you know, you can have some empathy from that you feel like's listening and cares about you. We can all find people like that in our lives that can be really, really beneficial to us. Um, so talking is, is hugely important. Another one is just doing some things that, you know, make you happy. If your, if your reservoir is at a healthy balance, then things that happen that are uncontrollable they're not going to be as big a deal. We're going to be able to deal with them so much more effectively if we get these, these beginning things right. We're going to be able to deal with life and stress and anxiety and depression so much more effectively. All of the different things that happen, the wear and tear of life, we'll be able to deal with a lot more effectively. So those five are a great starting spot to think of. And then from there, I would want you to determine what are my streams that fill up my reservoir? Well, maybe it's, you know, crocheting. Maybe it's going on hikes. Maybe it's spending time with, with my family, spending time with my kids really puts a lot of reservoir, lots of, you know, water in my reservoir. Maybe it's being really effective at, at my job is something that's really important to me. And so how do I do that successfully? How do I use that to fill up my reservoir? So like I said, thousands of different things to find that fill up your reservoir that just makes dealing with life, dealing with uncontrollable events, and even the controllable events a lot easier. So, so I like that in, in helping me to remember about, you know, these are some of the skills that I can use. And those skills are, just like I said, rivers, rain, that fills up the reservoir. Yes. Oh my gosh. I really want to just draw a picture of that. I think that's so great as all the streams, you know, coming down. I kind of think yeah. about it here in Utah. For those of you that are local, you know, all of our different water sources that kind of are feeding into you yep. know, the Great Salt Lake. Maybe not so great anymore. But again, you know, yeah. an amazing kind of you know, metaphor for it. And at the same time, I'm also thinking about those leaks as well as, you know, all of those tips and tricks, talking to a counselor, talking to someone, you know, it's like putting those plugs in the drain or putting, you yeah. know, putting a different patch over the, you know, sure. the garden hose that's leaking or some of those things. So, sure. so amazing. Um, I love this, Justin. I want to say thank you for myself and the whole Orion community for joining us again on this podcast. 
we will definitely have you back again um, yeah. because you always bring so many, you know, real actionable things to the table that we can all try. And like I said, I'm drawing pictures and scribbling things down myself. So I hope others are doing that as well. Yeah. Um, so again, Justin, you are um, an employee of Blomquist Hale Employee Assistance Program. So I would love for you just to tell people how they can get hold of you if they want more information, pamphlets, whatever might be available. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So I am with Blomquist Hale. We were an EAP, and so we have different companies that we work with. Most of them are here in Utah. There's a few outside. Um, but what we do is we do counseling for any type of issue that anybody would like to come in for. And so it doesn't have to be anything diagnosable. It can be controlling the uncontrollable. It could be stress. It could be any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we, we meet with people and th those are provided, you know, paid for by their company and it's 100% confidential. So, so if you're ever interested in, in working with us or if your company would like to be a part of that, it's as simple as you can send me an email if you would like. My email is just justin at blomquisthell.com or you can call our main number and you can ask for me and, and I'd be happy to talk to you at, for sure, answer any questions about any of this stuff or even anything about Blomquist Hell. But our main number is just 801-262-9619 and I'd be happy to answer any questions or help you out any way that I can. Awesome, Justin, thank you so much. People are always welcome to reach out to Orion as well. We do lots of work with Blomquist Hell, so we're happy to connect you that way as well. Um, and our health coaching often, you know, work in tandem with Blomquist Health. So it's kind of a fun little integration that we have. So again, Justin, thank you so much for joining us today um, and bringing your voice and your expertise and your personality to our podcast. I appreciate it. And thank you everyone for joining Rise Up with Orion. And we hope that you will tune in next month where we're going to start preparing for the holidays. So we hope that you will join us for our next episode. Thanks so much. Thank you.